Friends, our next topic is angle of lull. Now, angle of lull is one of the most important topics under second met orals for function three. Ninety-nine percent of the chances are that the survey is going to ask you this question under function three. Now, angle of lull. What is angle of lull? Angle of lull is nothing but when a vessel in unstable equilibrium continues to heave further. What happens is the KM gradually increases with increasing angle of heave, and it increases sufficiently to meet or equals kg. Now the vessel is in neutral equilibrium, and the angle of heave at which your vessel uh, meets the neutral equilibrium is called the angle of lull. So this angle is your angle of lull. This angle theta is your angle of lull. So let me allow me to explain more about angle of lull. So angle of lull is when a vessel is in unstable equilibrium. What happens is its KM is less than kg. Due to which the uh, transverse metacentric height is negative. When your transverse metacentric height is negative, the rightening moment which is formed is a negative rightening moment. All the capsizing moment, as you can see in the figure over here. So the vessel tends to heel further. So once the vessel tends to heel further, what is happening is with increasing angle of heel, your KM gradually increases. A point will come that the KM would increase sufficiently to meet kg. So the center of gravity and center of buoyancy. Are going to be vertically below each other. Okay, so center of buoyancy lies vertically below the center of gravity. The angle of heel at which this occurs is called your angle of lull. Now, when KM equals kg, the vessel is in neutral equilibrium. Your GM would become zero. Okay, so a vessel in having angle of lull, angle of lull could be on either side of the vessel. The vessel could be at its angle of lull either on starboard side or on the port side. So whenever this occurs, when a vessel is in neutral equilibrium, what happens is it, it does not have any. Uh, it does not tend to come back to its original condition, nor does the vessel tend to heel further. So that is when the vessel is in neutral equilibrium. So it presents the characteristics of neutral equilibrium when a vessel is on angle of lull. Also, it represents some of the characteristics of stable equilibrium. How does it represent the characteristic of stable equilibrium? Is that when a uh, external factor such as wave tends to heal the vessel further what is what will happen is the km once the vessel heals further from this condition with increasing angle of heal the km would gradually increase so once the km is greater than kg what is going to happen km greater than kg you have a positive gm and the rightening moment which is formed is a positive rightening moment okay so the rightening moment would tend to bring the vessel back to its angle of lull so that is one condition another condition is if a wave tends to reduce the angle of heel okay so if a wave tends to reduce the angle of heel what will happen with decreasing angle of heel your km would gradually decrease if the km is reduced is less than kg what will happen you have a negative gm and the rightening moment which is formed is a negative rightening moment or the capsizing moment which will tend to bring the vessel back to its angle of lull so this is about angle of lull uh Though the vessel looks to be in stable equilibrium over here, the vessel is very—it's uh, not stable because this is a very dangerous situation in which no action or any wrongful action would lead to the vessel capsizing. So we'll be looking into the remedial actions that needs to be taken for your angle of lull. So friends, the most—the uh, next most important question which is asked by surveyor is the remedial action for angle of lull. So we'll be looking into the remedial action for angle of lull is as follows. Now, when a vessel is at her angle of lull, what happens is it uh, a unstable vessel when it is healing, it comes to the neutral equilibrium. So the remedial actions are the remedial actions which are required for a unstable equilibrium as well as those which are required for neutral equilibrium. So what usually is the action that is required is in order to we have to lower the center of gravity in order to get a positive GM. Okay, this is the action which is required for unstable equilibrium as well as neutral equilibrium. So we want the KM has to be greater than kg. KM to be uh, so all the conditions of your stable equilibrium is dot that what we are looking for. So what we are how can we achieve this is when your vessel is at the angle of lull. Let's draw a vessel over here. This vessel is at her angle of lull. Okay. so what we are going to do is in order to shift the center of gravity what we can do is we can transfer the load distribution bring the loads lower to the lower deck okay 
now this is uh, somewhat impractical but uh, it is possible okay then loading of weights in case you are loading weights lo load the weights at the bottom or below the center of gravity in order to lower the center of gravity okay so loading can be done in this way what about uh, in case the ship is uh, uh, at sea what can be done is uh, ballasting can be done if you don't want to do loading in case the ship is at sea so let's suppose these are your tanks tank number 1 2 3 okay so how will you do ballasting is so ballasting the tanks with the mo uh, least movement of inertia which are at near the center line of the ship so you will be ballasting the tank on the lower side first which has the mo least movement of inertia okay so this is the tank we will be ballasting first then this tank then you'll be moving forward okay then your number three tank then the number one tank on the higher side so this is how you are going to do loading of weights what about discharging of weights now discharging of weights uh, you are, uh, in, when you are discharging weights you want to lower your center of gravity so discharging of weights need to be from the higher side first so in case weight is over here and over here okay now the vessel is heated so this distance is greater compared to this distance okay so your center of gravity we know the shift of uh, center of gravity gg1 equals wd divided by w so the vertical distance of the center of gravity is greater on the higher side compared to that on the lower side hence the center of gravity the shift of gg1 would be greater when you'll be doing the shifting or you'll be discharging the cargo from the higher side first so discharge the cargo from the higher side first okay after which you can discharge the cargo from the lower side then so this is how you're going to do the discharging then uh, what about uh, in case of jettisoning the cargo or you're removing the cargo jettisoning the cargo so in, in case you're using crane okay in case you are using crane for it, the allowance has to be made for the crane because when the once the load is lifted, your center of gravity is going to shift. So allowance has to be made for the crane uh, because uh, any uh, any wrong calculations could lead to a disastrous situation and your ship could capsize. So uh, have a look at it. Coming to uh, next is free surface effect. What about free surface effect? Free surface effect is what happens is when your vessel rolls. Okay, due to free surface effect the car, your the cargo will shift to the lower side once the cargo shifts to the lower side what happens is it increases the angle of roll as well as the period of roll so what we want is we want to reduce this we don't want this to happen when your vessel is at, the, at your angle of roll because once the vessel is at the angle of roll and the free surface effect adds to it your vessel is going to capsize so we have to reduce the free surface effect as well as try and eliminate it so what, what can be done is, in order to reduce the free surface effect or uh, eliminate it, fill up the slack tanks. So fill up the slack tanks, then transfer the cargo internally or the fuels or your ballast water, whatever you have. Transfer them internally such that least number of tanks remain slack and have the least movement of inertia near the center line of the tank. So th that is how you have to do uh, reduce the free surface effect and uh, try and eliminate it. So these are the remedial actions for your angle of load.